I saw a public service announcement this week and thinking about it for a couple days uh, I don't know what it was about it was some like, campaign or something uh, something about against hate I think and in the midst of it one of them said this and apparently it was kind of a slogan for the campaign that um, human problems need human solutions later in the week I googled it because I was trying to find it and I couldn't but uh, I found a whole slew of entries with that solution human problems need human solutions I didn't know it was a slogan for so many people you know and um, one of them even said in the course of this interview well of course human problems need human solutions I think James would disagree with that statement and in fact I think all of Catholic spiritual teaching would disagree with it at its core I'm not denigrating anyone and I'm not saying that there is some truth in that right but human if human problems just needed human solutions I can't help but think some I don't know how long human beings have been on the planet but I can't help but think we would have figured this out by now you know you would think we'd only have new problems that come up but we seem to be dealing with the same problems now in a lot of ways that we have been dealing with for thousands of years James says where jealousy and selfish ambition exist there is disorder in every foul practice so in other words when where there is disorder and foul practices among human beings underneath that must be selfish ambition and jealousy and so um, James really would see foul practices and disorder as symptoms more than the problem the real problem is underneath those things selfishness selfish ambition you know covetous covetousness jealousy and he puts them down to the passions he says and passions you have to read the passions not so much in the way we use the word every day but in Catholic theology we've kind of used that word passions uh, um, not completely differently but a little bit differently so the catechism says that passions are emotions or movement of the sensitive appetite in other words our desires not reason but our feelings and what we seek you know and these emotions uh, incline us to act or not act as something is regarded as good or bad you know so we either desire something because we think it's good or we don't because we think it's bad the problem with this whole thing is that um, we often seek things that are bad we desire them and Really, if you think about it, um, things like selfishness and selfish ambition are um, from a different place of love. The Catechism says the most fundamental good passion is love. And love we have always defined as seeking the good of the other even to the point and especially to the point of sacrificing our own good for the good of another and so if that's the most fundamental good passion the most fundamental evil passion 
will be its opposite, selfishness, seeking our good even at the expense of others. And we see there, that's what James would say is the root of our problems. You see, to say human problems need human solutions is to be overly optimistic about human beings and human nature. Now, I don't mean to be overly pessimistic, but there's something fundamentally wrong with our human nature, not by creation, but by what we've done to it. After Adam and Eve's disobedience, after the fall, as we call it, there's something fundamentally wounded about our human nature something fundamentally perverted that makes us seek things against what is good. The catechism goes on as it's talking about the passions. It talks about moral perfection. How does the human person become perfected in regards to the passions? The first step is control of the passions. And so that's done by reason and by our will. And so we, all of our passions need control, good and bad. Certainly our bad passions, those things that seek and want evil things, you know, things against God's will, those need to be controlled. We have to say no to those things. But even our good passions need control. I mean, eating is fine. But at some point you have to say, okay, Steph, that's enough. Get up from the table, you know. Sleeping is great. After three days on the couch, it's time to get up and do something else, you know. And so our passions, our desires, our appetites should not be the final thing for us. That's what leads often to problems. And so we learn what is good through scriptures, church teaching, whatever. And then we control our passions. That's the first step to moral perfection. The second step then is just conversion itself after a point of becoming identified with Christ more and more, we find that we don't desire those things that are against God. I'm reminded of a little story I've read about St. Francis of Assisi in a couple of places. Francis, as you know, spent most of his adult life, or certainly after his conversion, spent all of his life um, living a life of penances, you know, fasting and he's barefoot and begging and whatever else, long hours in prayer. And he called his body brother ass because he realized that the things that his body wanted would lead him away from God. You know. And so he spent a great amount of time controlling brother ass and trying to corral brother ass and get it to do the things that he wanted it to do. Toward the end of his life, he started to see that perhaps that was too harsh, that his body was in fact created by God and so should be respected. And so he started calling his body Brother Body. And the story I read was um, that also toward the end of his life, after he starts calling his body brother body and someone suggests to him that he should allow his body some good thing that you know he should listen to his body and allow his body to tell him what it wants and but he realizes after a lifetime of penances and controlling the body he his body really didn't have anything to say didn't really want anything And besides that, when he did, you know, uh, think of some things that he might desire, they were all good things anyway. 
after a lifetime of trying to identify with Jesus and give his life to God, he didn't really desire anything evil anymore. And so he's, there are the two stages of perfection. That first of all, we control both our good and our evil passions. And secondly, that we try to get closer and closer to God. We try to be um, more identified with Christ. And as we do, our bad desires fall away. And what we desire really is just good and godly things. We do have many problems, human beings do. And God wants us to use our creativity and our minds to solve them. We don't just sit around and pray and wait for God to do something. But we have to be reminded that the fundamental problem of human nature is our separation from God, is that our human nature is fallen. And so we don't need just human solutions to human problems. We need divine solutions. We need God's grace. We need God's mercy. We need Jesus Christ. That's why he came to earth. Because we could not solve our most fundamental problem. That we were separated from God. What James suggests is the first solution to human problems. Is to get at the root. To deliver our selfishness, our ambition, our jealousy, our coveting. Give all those to Jesus and let him take them away. And then we control our passions and we become more and more like Christ. Then many of our human problems, I think James would say, would be solved. 